Woody Womack and Adam Gorney here live in lovely Los Angeles. And we are joined by a very special guest, uh, Maryland head coach Mike Loxley. Coach, how are you feeling on signing day, getting everything wrapped up? Well, I'm feeling good. You know, it was a, a pretty uneventful day for us and the fact that, you know, we did a lot of the heavy lifting early. So uh, we added three three guys to, to, to the uh, the class today. Um, Osita Smith, uh, uh, early enrollee from Milford Academy, um, as well as, uh, you know, two junior college guys there, Almosi TT, and, and, and then also um, we added uh, Emilio Moran from Lackawanna. So, again, you know, continuing to build our, our depth and our uh, athleticism on the O-line and D-line and, and then adding a, a guy of Osita's caliber to our back end secondary, a big, long, um, hard-hitting, rangy safety kind of finishes the class off for right now and, and you know three 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 really strong additions to an already uh strong class now you mentioned you did that heavy lifting early and you guys were really one of the stories of the early signing period uh landing rakeem jarrett the five-star wide receiver you know t take us inside that and just how big of that was to get a playmaker like him and, and win him that type of recruiting battle for you yeah, I mean, it's a major get for us because he's a kid that's right here in our backyard that is well-respected um, by his peers here and, you know, a guy that shows tremendous leadership at an early age. You know, it takes a special kind of guy to make the tough decision that he made to forego an opportunities at some some of the top, as, as we like to say, blue blood, blue blood programs to stay here at home and build on the vision that we have for where we want Maryland football to go. Um, but I'm not surprised because I've known this kid since eighth grade, and uh, he was a guy that, again, you know, based off of, you know, his love for this area, uh, he grew up a big fan of Stefan Diggs, did something similar to what he did in terms of choosing to stay home instead of maybe going to some of the uh, programs that have been more established. And uh, I know he's a guy that a lot of people in this area respect, and, you know, we're hoping that we can build off the minimum of signing a player of his caliber. Um, and, and I know a lot of people love to talk about the, the Rock Kim signing, but we've had we feel really good about this class, just top to bottom, with the different playmakers, and we've shown that uh, we can go nationally and recruit some of the best players. As you look at the way our class was put together, Mike, you spent a lot of time you and your staff in the JUCO world in Kansas, especially, especially on defense too. How important was it to address some of those? after some struggles uh, on the field last season on that side of the ball? Well, you know, it wasn't just defense. You know, we signed two JUCO offensive linemen uh, with the addition of Emilio uh, uh, along with, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the other JUCO guys. But we also signed three D linemen that are really, really uh, – it's really important for us because when you play in the Big Ten, your ability to run the football and stop the run are going to be paramount, on your, paramount to your success. And so uh, for us coming in – we, we didn't have the depth we needed uh, in both sides of the uh, line of scrimmage, and we, we definitely made that a priority in recruiting and especially being able to get some guys that have immediate help. But we also signed some JUCO guys that, that are not just your typical two-for-two two junior college guys. we got, I think, two of the guys are three-for-three three prospects that, that we'll have around here for at least three years. Uh, you know, uh, Anthony McFarlane was a great running back for you guys, and and, you know, filling in some of that production is going to be big. You signed two four-star running backs in this class. Tell us what they bring to the table and uh, if they have a chance to maybe come in and see the field early. Yeah, well, obviously, if you look at the depth, you know, losing uh, Lorenzo Harrison to a uh, medical disqualification and, you know, with uh, Javon Leak and Anthony McFarlane both declaring for the draft, uh, it, it put a big dent into our, our running back room um, as well as the uh, – you know, the Fleet Davis suspension right now. So that leaves us with a guy, Jake Funk, who the all-time leading rusher in the state of Maryland. He's coming off of a knee injury himself, but very capable of being a big-time player. But I do believe, as, as you said, you know, signing the Detroit Metro Player of the Year and Penny Boone, uh, along with, a, uh, you know, tapping back into one of my relationships from Alabama, uh, Isaiah Jacobs, the brother of Josh Jacobs, who some thought would have been the Offensive Rookie of the Year, Definitely added two big-time playmakers to a, a thin backfield, and our expectation is that those guys will have to come in ready to go. Yeah, we were going to mess up Isaiah's ranking. We made sure he was a four-star, <laughs> unlike Josh. I, I told, 
<laughs> I told I told Farrell we're not letting that happen. Again. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, uh, why would it happen anyway? That's the part I don't get. Yeah, well, yeah, don't let, let, let let's not bring for, that up. That's for another day. <laughs> All right. Uh, you mentioned the uh, importance of keeping that local talent home. We know there's a ton of talent in that area, and that's of course you know one of the reasons we thought that that you would have success. Uh, how has it been in terms of you know the way the the brand is there and trying to keep a lot of this talent uh, close to home, especially going forward. Yeah, you know, one of the tough things that we've had to battle, and that's why when we got hired a year ago, almost to the day, um, we really put an onus on this 21 class that we started and, and have started out pretty fast with. Um, you know, as you guys know, recruiting is a two-year cycle in terms of just the relationship building. And so we were behind, obviously, in the 19 class, and we made up a lot of ground in three weeks uh, with the first class we signed last year. And then, you know, if you look at this 20 class, especially here in this area, and there were like two or three guys that I had already had committed at my previous place I worked. And we were behind there, but from day one when we walked in the door, we've targeted this 21 class as being the catalyst or the foundation for where this program needs to be. And, and if we're going to have any chance to build this program the right way, it's going to start with this 21 class. And, and, and to me, I, like you guys said, I think, you know, when you have three different coaches in a five-year period, it's hard to have a consistency, especially with the local recruiting because, I mean, you know, it really jumped out to me at our banquet last year at the end of the season. You know, some of our offensive linemen had four different offensive line coaches in a four-year window here. So um, it, it's tough to build consistency in recruiting philosophies when you've got the change at the top like we've had here. And hopefully uh, us being here for the, the long haul will give us that ability to really – put some deep roots roots into this area with relationships and I've had long lasting relationships with the assistant coaches I've hired the ability to develop these relationships which are really important in the recruiting process all right coach well we really appreciate you taking some time out and good luck as you get out there and chase those uh, 2021s all right man thank you guys